Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp for iPad Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp for iPad. Today, we're going to talk about the Arc and Pi tools. So this is two more ways to draw arcs. There's four total. The previous video was on uh, the two-point and three-point arc. This time, we're going to talk about the command that's just called Arc and pi. They're very, very similar. In fact, they work almost exactly the same way. Uh, what you get out of them is just slightly different though. Let's hop in and take a look how they work. All right, so here I am in SketchUp and you may notice uh, that the arc tools are not part of the default toolbar. So you do have to go into the dot, 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 the ellipse down here to get to them. And the ones we're going to look at, like I said, is this arc command and this pi command. Uh, we're going to go through every way to commit to actually create one of these arcs using the arc tool. And then I'll show you how pi tool works. And just remember that the actual input methods that we're talking about for arc will also work for pi. So let's go ahead and click on arc. All right, so first way of, of inputting here, I'm gonna input with the pencil and this pencil is currently set to just draw mode. So this is gonna be a little different from the other methods of input. I'm gonna look down because I'm gonna draw this arc flat on the ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here with my pencil. I'm gonna touch to the screen and then drag up and then let go. What I just did there was set the center of the arc. And then as I drag up the green, I set the radius of the arc. Now, next time, what I'm gonna do next is touch the screen and pull. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be setting the distance of the arc. So see there, see how I'm pulling that line from that green line around. And that distance is what I'm setting right now, that angle between the first point and the next point. If I release, it draws it. If I want to change it, I can come in, tap right in right now, change the angle by typing in a new dimension. If I'm in click, move, click mode, it's going to be slightly different. Very similar process as far as the points that I want to select, but of course, different input method, different, slightly different process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hard press right here, move out here, hard press again, move along the angle that I want to draw, hard press a third time. That gives me that, that arc with click, move, click. All right, pencil's gone. Let's talk about inputting using touch. Very similar to what we just did. I'm going to click and hard press right here, then move my finger out, hard press a second time. Then I'm going to drag, click, drag, hard press a third time. So hard press, hard press, and then bring it around, hard press again. All right, one more input method. Let's talk about using the mouse. All right, so mouse is very, is probably the simplest way to, to draw these arcs. Uh, for one thing, you don't have your finger getting in the way, and uh, it's a little more precision, I think, with the mouse a lot of times. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna drag out the radius, click, and I'm gonna drag the angle, click again. That simple. Really very, very, very easy. So as I do each of these, there are options over here uh, for, um, you know, my, my different options for input here. For one thing, I can increase or decrease the number of sides. Hit the plus, of course, to increase number of sides, decrease to decrease the number of sides. And then I have different uh, snap modes. So I can hit red, and red's going to, you can see that it just takes my compass and locks it to that red axis where green will turn it the other direction. So if I click over here, and obviously, as I, as I spin that in 3D space, it made a little more sense what I just drew. As opposed to these ones I drew on the ground, would basically exactly what would show up if I had constrained to the blue axis and started drawing. I also have options here to constrain to parallel or perpendicular two lines. Those, of course, have to be created and drawn in beforehand to, to snap to those. All right, so I do want to look at pi real quick. This is going to be super simple because, like I said, the process is exactly the same. But if I come over here, let's go switch over to just draw mode and we'll draw a pie slice right here. So I'm going to sl slide up to get my first one, just like I did with the, the regular arc. And I'm going to pull it over. And here's the difference. Here's what pie does. When I release, it creates a face. That's the difference. So everything else is exactly the same. I'm going to go grab my mouse. And we'll draw another one. I'm going to click to set the beginning point, click to set the radius, move to whatever the angle is I want, and click again. And that's the only difference between a pie and an arc are these two edges that get created here and here. And those two edges end up creating a face. Other than that, arc and pie work exactly 
the same. So simple tool to input really. Uh, it is a little different from the arcs we were talking about with the last one where we did a two point, three point arc where we picked two points and then kind of changed the, the bulge of the arc uh, based on those two points. With this, you end up setting the radius first. So if you're working off an architectural plan that has like a rounded window or something like that, you may have a dimension from the center of that window back to whatever the radius is. And this is the tool you'd use to input that. Where's the center point? What's the radius? and then just drag the angle from where it should start to where it should go. Uh, super easy to use, especially once you've done it once or twice. Like with, if you're a SketchUp user, you already know how to use it. And the only question once you get into SketchUp for iPad is how to use the tools to specifically create the geometry. And hopefully this video covered exactly what it is. And hopefully you liked it. If you did like it, go ahead and click like down below. And if you don't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Are you liking this SketchUp for iPad? Do you like our Square One videos? We like making these videos a lot, but we like it even more when showing something you want to see. Thank you.